The Sims 4, the fourth entry in one of the highest grossing and best selling game franchises of all time. A franchise that has had a major release in every single one of the last three decades and will probably have a major release in the fourth. So you'd think they'd have their act together when it comes to making games, right? Hell, they've made four of them and 67 packs to go along with them. Jesus Christ. Anyway, you'd think they'd have their act together, right? <laughs> Sims 4 has become a controversial topic in the years since its release. Most new fans love it, a lot of old fans hate it, and then there's the significantly large group of people in between who don't know what really to think, but just kind of keep buying the endless stream of expansion packs and game packs and stuff packs in the hopes it'll get better. But it's been over three years, and in my eyes at least, it hasn't gotten any better. If anything, the opposite has happened. So sit on down, grab yourself a tasty halal snack, and slap on some insect repellent. Because I'm about to kick the hornet's nest. Revealed in August 2013 at Gamescom, The Sims 4 was released on PC in September of 2014 to, uh, mixed reviews? Many reviewers and players alike cited a feeling of emptiness, like the game wasn't complete and was missing key features that people kind of expect in a Sims title. Hell, there's even a features controversy section on the game's wiki page and... Yes, I just use Wikipedia's reference, shut up. Lack of features such as pools, toddlers, basements, cars, work locations, and general rabbit holes, as well as the absence of an open and persistent game world were among the key complaints. To their credit, the developers did do as they promised and added many of these features free of charge, but we'll get to that later. Before we go digging into everything, however, let me preface one thing. I do not hate The Sims 4, nor do I even think it's a bad game. It's just kinda dull. There's not a great deal to do, at least for my playstyle, and in a game that's supposed to be simulating life, it has sim in the title, it doesn't feel very lifelike, at least to me. That said, there are plenty of things I like and even love about The Sims 4. Quite a lot, actually. I go back and forth on the game's visuals, but there's plenty to like about the more cartoony art style. Not least of all its relation to the series' cartoony themes in general, and the effect it has on the game's performance. Hands down, The Sims 4 is just an outright smoother, an easier play experience than The Sims 3. No competition. 60 FPS on any sort of half-decent hardware, no stutters, no crashes, no freezes, all the time. As a casual experience, it's extremely easy to get into. Sim interactions are smoother, easier and more balanced, pathing is better and it feels more polished overall. The same could be said about build-by mode, with pre-made rooms and swatches providing an easy way for new players to build houses that actually look half-decent, albeit at the expense of a lot of the creative options of its predecessor. I'd really love to see something that allowed us to sort of select individual styles, uh, colours, patterns, textures on each object, you know, with maybe like a, a colour where... Oh! Wait! Creator Sim is by far the best thing in The Sims 4, leagues better than anything before it. It runs great, the click and drag mechanics to create and sculpt Sims features is super intuitive and it's super easy to make an entire household rather than the chore it was in The Sims 3. I'm just gonna wait here for seven minutes for these clothes to load in. And while I, like most other people, hate the screechy, vaguely fascist sound of SJWs calling for equality and representation. The fact the game has so many options like female clothes on males, vice versa, uh, types of walks, pregnancy and gender options and all that is great to see, even though it doesn't generally suit my true to my life play style, I'm a 20 year old white dude. More options and ways to play are always a plus. And of course the score. Elon Eshkari's mix of bouncy and positive tracks with grand sweeping pieces make doing anything in build by a treat. There's plenty of tracks here I really wish were in The Sims 3, simply because I play it more and therefore I'd get to hear them more often. Sound effects and sound design in general are top class, extremely well implemented and seamless, which is kind of the point. If the average player doesn't notice the sound design, the sound designer has done their job. It really is a great score, but unfortunately for us, that's where the goodness stops. As I will now explain. 
Remember that shot in the Sims 3 announcement trailer back in 2008, where the guy walks out of his house, it pans across the street to see the other Sims talking, then whips out to show the whole persistent world? Yeah, that's gone, fam. Gone. Disparu. Veg. Proslo. Nesto. I'm just reading gone in different languages now, that last one was Bosnian. Anyway, hey, look, I, I like a living, thriving, persistent world as much as the next owner of Shrek Forever After on Blu-ray, but you know what I really liked? The wonderfully intuitive system from The Sims 2, from 2004, that was designed to run on Windows XP. Gone are the kids swimming down at the pool and the family playing at the park down the street. Instead, they're stuck behind loading screens. Rabbit holes are gone. You don't go to work, per se. You just sort of dematerialize. Kids are the same. There's no school bus that comes and gets them and whisks them off to school. You know how all the cool kids are getting to school these days? Walk drive. All jokes aside, let's be serious for a second, if I can. I hear a lot of talk about open world with its absence being on the minds of many, with plenty of people yelling that they want it back. What I don't hear, however, is why they want it back. All I really hear is a lot of, eh, I want it back, eh, it was fun, but The Sims 3 had it. There is, however, far more to it than that. An open and persistent world was a core part of The Sims 3 experience. The game wanted you to be able to go anywhere, anytime, and this concept was built into the base game, its functionality, and developed further with each expansion. Professions had you going around throughout the world, putting out fires, investigating cases, renovating people's houses, exploring tombs or finding collectibles. Whether you did these things or not was entirely up to you, but the option was always there and was implemented in the core game and expanded throughout its life. And yes, the game's performance suffered as a result of the open world, to the point of some worlds being almost unplayable. Yes, I'm looking at you. That is unacceptable, I agree wholeheartedly. But that was only really in some instances, and the game underneath all that was in harmony with itself. It knew what it was trying to achieve and was generally well designed from a gameplay perspective. With The Sims 4, however, its mechanics are at conflict with one another. At its core, it's designed to be fluid. Movement, animations, performance, pathing, interactions, all are seamless and smooth. But throwing a series of loading screens into that recipe fundamentally conflicts with the experience the game is trying to achieve. What point is a fluid game if each separate part of it is locked behind a 10 to 30 second non-skippable loading screen? It leads to a game that feels separated, compartmentalized, like all the pieces haven't been quite stitched together yet. It's jarring, and most certainly not fluid. I get that loading screens are a necessary part of gaming. Even masterpieces like The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt have them between worlds. Difference is, each world in The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is titanic and can entertain you for hundreds of hours without ever needing to leave and see a loading screen. In The Sims 4, if you want to go to the park, or go across the street, or even if you want to visit an apartment in the same building, you're stuck with a bland, jarring loading screen. For example, would you rather have this video uploaded at 30 FPS, consistent lower performance like The Sims 3, or have it uploaded in smooth, fluid 60 FPS, but each segment of the video has a 30 second non-skippable ad? I know which I'd choose, and I'll tell you in just a second. I think I've said enough. I do wish it stopped there, I really do, but unfortunately The Sims 4's woes don't just stem from a lack of open world. I talked earlier about the general lack of things to do in the game at launch, and it's still there today. Now I'll say, in the interest of full disclosure, that I only own three of the... God, 22 packs that have been released for The Sims 4, holy fuck. But I've done my research on every pack that's been released up to date, and all the stuff it includes, which... Well, it's not really painstaking, it really didn't take that long because they don't actually add anything. For what it's worth, those 22 Sims 4 packs are more packs in just over three years than we got for The Sims 3 and over four and a half, and per unit, these ones are costing more, but we'll talk about that in a bit. Even with the packs I have, I'd kind of expect to have enough to do, especially since those packs have a total price in Australia of $130 on top of the $80 base game, but no! Outside of Get to Work, which I actually thought was a perfectly solid expansion that I really enjoyed, there's been nothing added that really entices me to come back and play anymore. In fact, before I started recording footage for this video, I hadn't booted up The Sims 4 since May 25th last year. Instead, in that time, I'd played about 150 hours of The Sims 3, a previous gen 8-year-old game that I've 
pretty much what you would think gotten everything out of. The Sims 4 has been so heavily streamlined it hardly feels like a Sims game anymore, at least in my eyes. Many of the mechanics that made previous games so popular are either late, paid for, or omitted completely. Wait a minute. Streamlined to death. Great visuals and an exceptional soundtrack, but missing the fundamentals of previous titles. A rough launch and a tendency to split the fan base and anger longtime fans. Well, that's two of my three favourite franchises, Electronic Arts has aptly murdered, and the third one has been dispatched by ya boy. Whenever I play, I feel like I'm in a box, not a real thriving world full of people. I don't really want to take my sims out that much because there's a loading screen in the way and I kind of have to weigh up whether the load time is worth the activities I can potentially do wherever we're going and most of the time the answer is no so I kind of just end up at home doing not a real lot. I can't wait for my sims to finish work and, and get them to grab some groceries or go to the gym on the way home because they just sort of materialize on your doorstep when they're done with work. Can't go looking all around the world for events going on or secluded lots to visit because if I go outside the boundaries I'm subjected to some of the laziest world design I have ever seen in my life. Flat car textures, helicopters flying around using the models from what looks like Simcopter from 1996. It just sucks any and all immersion one could have. This is one of the most significant steps backwards I've seen in a franchise that I can really remember. They take a great leap forward with Sims and their interactions and go so far back with the world they live in that it drags the game back as a whole. And it makes me so frustrated because I know they can do better than this. EA has hordes of cash and the Sim Studio has years and years of experience under their belt. It's like they got scared of the performance complaints of The Sims 3 and sacrificed almost everything that was good to fix one bad point, even though most people were kind of happy to make that trade-off, then tried to fill out the game with features that most won't use anyway. But by far the worst part of The Sims 4 is not even the game itself. Like I said, the game is not bad, but this, this is. Oh God, the structure for content and pack releases is the worst it's ever been. The Sims 3 was guilty of this as well quite badly, but it just keeps getting worse with age. The Sims came out with expansions, The Sims 2 had expansions and stuff packs, The Sims 3 had more of basically everything and The Sims 3 store, and The Sims 4 amped up the regularity and price of packs and crammed them down your throat every chance they get. Every time you boot up the main menu, you can see every pack you own or don't own. Hey, look at this, you don't have this pack? Oh, look at that, look at all those blank spaces, piece of shit, you happy? Idiot. We are three years and three months into The Sims 4's life. By this point in The Sims 3's lifespan, we'd had world adventures, ambitions, late night generations, pets, showtime, supernatural, and we'd be expecting our next release to be seasons. Not laundry stuff. Fucking laundry, oh good, yeah, fucking laundry happened. Seven expansions with an eighth just a month away. I could happily play The Sims 3 indefinitely with those packs. There's four of my five favorites mentioned right there, and there'd been a healthy serving of stuff packs too, up to and including Katy Perry's sweet treats. Shh, repress the memory. For The Sims 4, we've had just four major expansions and one of the most aggressively marketed flood of game and stuff packs I have ever seen. Spa Day sucked, I got that one for free. Then there's Outdoor Living, which added some tents, fitness stuff, which added literally nothing of use to anyone. Backyard stuff, which gave water slides, I guess. Look, I get these are cheap, they're 10 to $15 depending on where you are, but there's so many of them. We've gotten to the point where if you go to try and buy a pack for The Sims 4, it's just a wall and you don't know what's what. There's no difference between any of them, it's just noise. We've had 13 stuff packs, three last year, five in 2016 alone, and another four the year before that. $10 a pop, that's what, $130 total? Or if you're playing $15 like a lot of people are, myself included, that's $195 just for stuff packs. Is it worth that sort of money? No, it's not. Now, of course, the devs did add features free of charge, as I mentioned earlier. Things like pools and toddlers and all that jazz. But if you look beyond the free stuff, there's something else going on here. Pools! Added for free at the end of 2014. A few months later, perfect patio stuff. Coincidence? Me thinks not. Toddlers. 
added for free at the beginning of last year. Nick Minute. Toddler stuff. Oh, how convenient. You see, there's a pattern of giving us free things that don't really have a whole lot to do. Pools are cool, but there's not much else to do in the backyard. So then they go and give us the option of paying for patio stuff. Toddlers are added for free, but really aren't that developed. Then they give us a toddler stuff pack if you're willing to pay for it. I feel as though everything has an ulterior motive at this point with the express goal of making money, which I understand is the point of a business. But the way in which Electronic Arts have been going about it in recent years, well, you know the rest. At least there's no loot boxes, right? <laughs> Yet. The whole situation isn't helped by the fact that the Sims community is far too accepting for their own good. Or maybe that's the cause. Electronic Arts know the community won't revolt, so they cash in while they can. Either way, for the most part, the Sims community is one of the most passive communities in existence. It seems players are just happy to take whatever is given to them, talking up each pack like it's a great addition that's worth the money. The first part may be true, the things added are generally of a high quality, but there's too few of them and the changes to gameplay are too trivial to make these packs truly worthwhile. There's also the issue of content creators, who are the single biggest influencer of games in the industry. Movies have A-list celebrities, games have YouTubers. And aside from a precious few, the vast majority of content creators focused on the Zim's franchise are partnered with EA, and talk up and overhype each pack release like clockwork, without a thought to the value proposition presented to players who buy these games with their own money. With a part of a professional publication or not, anyone holding sway over a young and impressionable audience has a moral obligation to be transparent and truthful at every step, and, when influencing whether or not people should purchase a product, to critique said product and voice any concerns and issues that might affect the product's potential value to the customer, rather than simply saying you wish it had more content before going back to smothering the product in praise and promptly thanking the publisher for the free copy. This is something many creators, not just in this community but in the YouTube community as a whole, simply do not understand. Which is a real shame, because at the end of the day, with the internet and social media bringing us closer to developers than ever, we're in a better place than we've ever been to have a real say in the games we get. As a general rule, people have had enough of paying for one thing and getting another, and we've seen in recent months the effect this can have on even the most steadfast and stubborn developers. If only our voice can be heard. At this point, I think I've said all there is to say, really. The Sims 4 is a flawed game that does a lot of things right, it really does, then proceeds to shoot itself in the foot with every step it tries to take forward, which is a real shame, because behind it is a team that really wants to make good games and has the ability to make good games. They're just hamstrung by pressure from publishers and time constraints and a number of other factors that we see all too often in gaming these days. I want to like The Sims 4, I really do, but at this point, I'm pretty much cutting my losses and hoping the game makes enough money for them to make a Sims 5 and then maybe that will be the game we all wanted and were expecting this time around. Hopefully this enlightened you or something. The goal wasn't to throw endless hate to The Sims 4. I don't hate it, I just want it to be more. I want it to be the game that I know it can be, but just isn't right now. Let me know if you agree with my points. Do you like The Sims 4? Do you like The Sims 3 more? Do you even prefer the first two Sims games over both of them? Let me know in the comments. Meanwhile, I'll just be here playing The Sims 3, lagginess and all. Waiting for the day when all my Sims dreams come true.